nice and big and fat. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and the duck tractor experiment is over. But was it a success? And would I do it again? That's what this video is about. Quack, quack. Let's get into it. I've already covered the build of this duck tractor in other videos, so you can go back and have a look at them. I'll put links below. Having said that, there are still things I'm going to improve on and change to get this even better now that I've dragged this around the yard for the last three months. Installing a shelter at the back of the duck tractor so that I wouldn't have to constantly transport the ducks in and out from the actual run itself was a really great idea. Putting these jockey wheels on the back to give it some mobility so I wouldn't have to skull drag the thing around so it actually roll around also helped a lot. However, I don't think positioning them on the back is the best idea. The jockey wheels have too much pressure overall. They tend to dig in and moving the jockey wheels to this next post here on either side, I think would make it even easier to lift from the front. The only other small modifications I'll probably make is with the feeders and drinkers. I'm going to just add a couple of feeders and I'm going to fix them to the sides of the run so that I don't have to take them out every time I move it. I can just have them sit there permanently and just get dragged around. And the drinker, I still like the big clamshell. They really do love a good dip and swim. So I'm thinking if I fix it to the side, when I move it, just fold it up and tie it off to the side of the duck tractor on the inside there and then move it around. I think that'll work perfectly. I guess you're wondering where the heck are the ducks? Well, unfortunately for them, they were processed. Keep them calm, nice and big and fat. We did spare one of the ducks, you'll be happy to know, and that was on Thanksgiving. If you followed my videos, do you remember that little dwarf duckling we had, the female apple yard? Well, she ended up growing to full size. It was quite incredible how she did end up as a full size duck. I'd never seen that before. I'd never seen a duck start off so small and stay small and then suddenly take off and get to full size. I decided to give her a presidential pardon and I think two ducks will produce enough eggs to be able to get that duck tractor moving a little bit more regularly. Anyway, let's let them out. Might as well top up the duck bucket while I'm here. You're not getting the chop. You're safe. <laughs> yeah, so there's the three now. I think three will be good for a while. We'll see, maybe we'll get a few more. But uh, for now, yeah, we saved one from the chop. But yes, there comes a time when you have to process the ducks unless you're keeping them just for the eggs, of course. But the whole thing about this was keeping it for the meat bird itself. And we really do like duck meat. I know that's not a popular thing. I know that I'm going to get a few thumbs down for stating that on my channel. A lot of you are vegans and vegetarians that follow me for the veggies and you don't like this type of thing. I totally respect that. Actually, I'm going to Christmas soon. Uh, in, soon. <laughs> I'm going to Christmas soon. Yeah, we all are. Uh, the, the, on the 25th, my cousin who is hosting Christmas this year, Anna Maria, she is a avid vegetarian. And I totally respect that and I understand why she is. She doesn't force that on anyone else though. Just like we don't ridicule her for being a veggie. You know, she's been one of them ever since she was a young girl. And she just doesn't like the principles of eating something that has to be murdered like this. Um, and I think differently. And she understands my side and I understand her side. And so that's what I'm saying. I, 
I, I respect people having a vegetarian choice and a vegan choice, I, and I actually get it. But for me and my family, we do still like to eat meat, and this is part of what we do in our own homestead, as you'd call it in the States, or acreage, as you mainly call it here in Oz. So even though I'm not a veggie or a vegan, the main thing that is important to me still is that the animals that we do keep do have a good life right until the end. And that's what I think we have given the ducks in the duck tractor. Now, I'm not gonna get into that process too much, except to say that the process was quick. I just isolated them off in here as best I could so that I could easily get the birds one by one and then I've got an area where we process them over the other side there. Putting them through the further processing of plucking them and plucking ducks, I tell you what, that's never an easy task. I know there's methods of waxing and other types of things you can do. I tend to put them in a soaking solution of water that's around 60 to 62 degrees Celsius with a little bit of added detergent in the water. I dunk the ducks in that. I make sure that they're wet as possible and that those pores are opened up. And then I use an automatic chicken plucker that does an okay job, I'll be honest. It does a fairly good job, but it doesn't get all the feathers out. And you still have to spend quite a bit of time pulling out the rest of the feathers. In fact, a few times I had to re-dunk the ducks and then put them back through the plucker to get those feathers out and there's also a timing when you want to eat them you don't want to go longer than 12 weeks usually maybe 16 weeks max but the best time for most meat ducks to process them for eating is usually around 7 to 12 weeks but that depends on how well they're growing and you have to assess that. But you don't certainly want ducks that are way too old. I've done that before. I've cooked up ducks that we've had for a couple of years and I tell you, they're as tough as old boots to get through. They might be fairly tasty, but they're hell chewy. They're about as chewy as an old rooster would be if you plucked it and then left it sit in the sun for a few days to dehydrate and turn into jerky and then you roasted it for an hour over a fire. That's about as tough as those ducks were. But anyway, if you do it this way, you get a very good finished product. You finish plucking them, and then of course you finish the process, and that's, you've got to gut the bird, which isn't very nice. I mean, the whole process is awful, to be honest, except for the eating part. Oh, and of course the keeping part. The keeping part, the hatching, the keeping, and the the eating is great, but the dispatching side of things I really hate and I can never get used to it. I never will get used to it, but it's part of the necessary process to get where we want to get. I have to say at first I wasn't too sure how a duck tractor would go, but I wanted to try one out and just see for myself if it would work in our situation. And I can say that, well, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? I'm happy with the way the duck tractor has gone and I will be keeping that going in the future. I think it's a good way to house ducks that are going to be processed. And apart from those few modifications, I think the duck tractor cage system is pretty sound. And at the end of the day, after all that, they were fantastic on the dinner plate. We didn't eat them all, of course. We kept some in the freezer. I used the carcasses to make duck fat, which we will use on potatoes and french fries and cooking. Duck fat is excellent and I'll show you how I made or rendered that duck fat on my second channel, Self Sufficient Me Too, and I'll do that shortly. I've got a whole string of videos coming on that channel soon. We ate two of the ducks last night. Once I had finished processing them, I left them sit in the fridge for a good few days just to relax down a little bit and then I barbecued them up as simple as that barbecued them for a heck of a long time you'd be surprised at how tough duck skin is and the fat underneath it I always like to render it fat down and skin down for as long as possible so don't be shy to leave it on there keep checking of course that you don't burn it but don't be shy to really crisp it and brown it up on that one side and don't turn it 
until the very last minute because you want it to be very crispy on one side but not overcooked because duck meat is best when it's rare. What do you reckon? Mm. Grilled, very nice. <laughs> grilled duck mm. with cranberry sauce. Very simple. Mm. Great stuff. Tender. Oh. Yeah, tasty. Mm. Mm. So good. The taste was absolutely delicious. The actual structure of the meat was lovely. It was tender. If you don't mind me sounding a little weird, it was almost a pleasure to eat them after all this time of getting them from duckling to the plate. It was, uh, it's kind of nice when you've done the whole process and you know, enjoyed those birds all through the process right until the end on the dinner plate. I know it sounds a little macabre, but me knowing the process um, and looking after the birds and then dispatching them and then cooking them up is a, a really special thing and something at Thanksgiving, I understand why Americans, you know, love the turkey so much and that symbolizes why we should be thankful for what we have and what we get and what we create and what we grow and eat. So that's the whole thing for me that I love about it. Well, on that note, let's, uh, I hope you love it too. I hope you love this video and give me a big juicy thumbs up. Share the video around and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Quack, quack. Looks like they're all getting along. The Drake's happy. We've got two girls. <laughs>